Hello and welcome. It's Casey from Retroactive Arcade again. Uh, I'm going to go over something nice and simple this time. Uh, we're going to kind of go back to super basics and talk about wiring a button, what different type of buttons there are, and uh, I guess the quality levels of buttons, as well as the micro switch, how they map out. And uh, I do have a wiring diagram. I'm going to be using a JAMA harness for this kind of demonstration, but the demonstration will work with anything. So it works with your arcade uh, controllers, your uh, arcade en uh, encoders, your Zinmos, your IPAC 2s, and all that kind of stuff, the Howler and everything else. Um, all of them have different wiring inputs on the actual board itself. Uh, but the way they connect to the button and stuff is universal. It's all the same. So this should be uh, uh, pretty good and informative for anybody beginning and starting out uh, with uh, uh, building an arcade. And I'm going to go over how to wire illuminated buttons and regular buttons. And like I said, go over the different types. So I've got a bunch of different types right here. Um, they're not all the types, that's for sure. Uh, but they, the bases are covered on them. So on this side here, we've got uh, our concave American style buttons. And then we have our convex. Um, competition type Sanwa buttons and stuff like that they are uh, of a higher quality because they use kind of like a I guess you could say compare it to the old gold leaf style where they uh, they connect automatically um, the good thing with these buttons is that uh, they got a real good response rate so um, these seem to have a little bit of a less response rate but because it's going through uh, as a different connection inside. So you've got your little micro switch. So you push down, it hits the micro switch, then it sends a signal. Everything's kind of all in one on these ones. So competition uh, fight sticks and things like that, all those guys love these buttons. Uh, these aren't really for the traditional style arcade. So we're gonna kind of stay on this end of things. Um, plus these ones don't illuminate even though they look like they might, they don't. There's only two connections, positive and negative. And on with these ones, uh, just to uh, cover our grounds with them. Uh, I'll show you the bottom. So underneath they only have two connections. Uh, with that being said, positive and negative, and it doesn't matter which one you do. So if you map them wrong on any, you can uh, put four, six, eight in, in your controller and uh, you can wire them all differently and it doesn't matter as soon as you press the button, they'll be fine. So positive and negative on each side, uh, you're good to go. Um, with these, <clears throat> American style push buttons that use a micro switch are going to be set up kind of like this. So sad. Anyway, so uh, the micro switch on there, this one here has three prongs. Some of them only have two, so some of them don't have this one that's here. Um, this is a zippy micro switch. There's some generic ones and stuff. We carry a whole bunch of different kinds. I'm not going to show them to you. Uh, the only difference is, is that uh, there's like a weight and a sound to it. So you can kind of hear the click on this one. A generic one is going to be really loud and it's going to be really stiff. Um, this one's nice and smooth, uh, so it's kind of nice. And then you don't hear the buttons clicking uh, while you're playing your game and stuff. So um, usually if you have the thing cranked up, it's all good to go. Uh, you wouldn't have to worry about the sound and stuff anyway. Uh, these buttons specifically are from Suzo Hap. To know that, they have a thing on there called, it says Suzo Hap. Um, there are some ones from China that look exactly the same and they're actually from the exact same mold. Um, they just use, sometimes they use a different uh, quality of, uh, of plastic, but to be honest, there's no real difference whatsoever. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is that some of the ones from China have a different uh, feel on them uh, down here for what, the way the micro switch mounts and stuff. And I find them to be a little bit flimsy. This one will uh, last you forever. Uh, they're designed to be beat the hell out of. Anyway, so the wiring on this one's pretty simple. You've got your top prong here, which is always ground on any micro switch, no matter what. So you've got the one showing on the bottom furthest down is going to be uh, your ground. So you're going to have on these harnesses, you have a daisy chain already on a JAMA harness, which makes the JAMA harness super easy to use, um, which is really good. Then you just daisy chain these around to all your buttons so and all your micro switches. So that'll include your joystick and stuff too, because most joysticks have just micro switches mounted to the bottom underneath. Um, I can show you with these ones here. Uh, this is a Japanese version, um, but you can see that they're kind of micro switches on the side. This one's, uh, um, it only has the two prongs. Uh, so the bottom one or the one closest to the outside of the switch itself is your ground and then your uh, active uh, line in on there is uh, 
that's going to be your colored one or whatever you choose to run it with uh, silicon arcade can, uh, encoder or whatever you can plug your own wires choose your own colors run your own lines do whatever you want um, with that being said everything's pretty simple on these so obviously i was talking about the ground so you could ground on the bottom then you've got your active one uh, on the one underneath it just below the one on the top isn't used the only way time you actually use this one is i kind of use it on my coin doors and such um, so if i'm running a splice for my coin button or you want two buttons to do the same action you're running a daisy chain from one uh, button to the other um, so that maybe you want them to be the same thing like one coin on one side of your control panel one on the other or uh, we do it with our cocktails where we connect one like a coin button on player one and then we connect it to the coin door at the bottom one of the buttons in that lead will be connected normally like i've explained and then the secondary button for it to work has to be connected to the third prong that's furthest away now if you only have a two prong switch you have to find a three prong switch to do what i just said um, so it's basically um, if you're daisy chaining two micro switches to do the same action that you would have to worry about that but most times you won't right you don't want to have two uh, a and b buttons because i mean what's the point of that but uh, so the only circumstance that i've ever found that in is a coin door so <clears throat> The other thing, a simple, yeah, you've heard all this stuff before, and or that you get it pretty quick. I'm going to go over how to wire up LEDs as well. So LED buttons, these are just the chrome ones. I've got some other regular ones, and there's some other LEDs as well. Um, these ones come with a lamp holder, um, which is <clears throat> pretty standard. Some of them have different molds, but the way they sit is always the same. So basically what happens with those is you take your little LED. They'll come in pieces. Um, the LED here, let's see if we can zoom in on that, uh, on either side you see two different wires. There's a thick wire with one wrap and then there's a thin wire with two wraps on it. The thin wire on, on, that's wrapped around twice is the, your line in, so your power, your voltage. And then your ground is always that thick wire. So I'd advise when you're putting these together to always do it one way or the other, it's up to you, but all, make them all the same. I tend to take the ground side and put it on the bare or short side of the lamp holder and then the side that holds the micro switch which is the long side obviously I always set it to the power side and then I put that LED in so that they're all the same I always remember it's my own little deal and then when you connect your lines you're going to want to connect your um, your ground and then your power which I'll talk about in a second um, and then basically your lamp holder after your button's all mounted in your in your control panel, you just drop it in, give it a little twist. This one's gonna be tough for whatever reason. Of course, it doesn't wanna work because we're doing a video. Let's change up the color. So I'm gonna put in the red the way it was. And then you just give it a little twist. It won't come out, it's mounted into your thing. And then you take your micro switch for your lamp holder. It works exactly the same way as your other micro switches with the holder on it already click it in good to go so now you can see we've got five prongs on there now it's not that confusing just looking at one or even two or just a one player control panel with six to eight buttons that kind of thing it's not a big deal but when you start doing a four player and you've got 24 buttons or 28 buttons or something like that if you go main and you want to have 32 buttons and you want to light them all up this gets pretty complicated underneath your uh, control panel so we sell a harness, you can probably get these anywhere, but we sell them. Um, we have small ones, we have large ones. This one's kind of for like a one to two player. Uh, and this one's for a four player. It's got 32 uh, outputs on it, uh, which is nice. And they're really long. So if you have a really big control panel, this thing will just go across the whole thing, which is great. Um, with that being said, uh, the simplistic way of doing these things is obviously you've got your your ground and your power um, now the thing i don't like about this harness itself is just the coloration especially for canada and uh, north america um, usually uh, red means you know positive five and black always means ground um, but with these leds unless they're indicated otherwise they should be running at uh, 12 volt so you can connect this obviously to 12 volt it's just the color so you do, it doesn't really matter but this one's kind of color coded which is nice um so you just don't forget um 
but yeah, other than that, these are rated both for 512, everything, it's all good. So <clears throat> you would come right off your LED. I, always, I kept my ground on my short side and then the side that mounts the um, micro switch I did for my power. So you would just run your power directly to your micro switch lamp holder. And then <clears throat> I usually do these after I wire everything else because they get so tight with everything else. These ones actually go up and over, which is great. Um, so you want to you want to put this uh, these uh, <clears throat> LED harnesses on after you've wired your whole panel, and then it just keeps it a lot neater. These seem to be longer; they're thicker, so they'll come up and they'll go over to the next one, and so on and so forth. With the JAMA harness, you've got your daisy chain, and then obviously your 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 uh, coordinated colors, like I have for this uh, <clears throat> for the JAMA harness diagram here that's available on our website. Um, yeah, you can download it anytime. It'll tell you what these colors mean. So I don't know if you can actually zoom in here or whatever, but it'll tell you that you've got your coin, your P2 start or player one start. It tells you which side of the JAMA harness is player one and player two. Um, it'll tell you, you know, your right, up, down, fire button, one and two and three and four and that kind of thing. So it's super simple. You look at it, grasp the concept in a couple of minutes. It's not a big deal. And then you can wire up your whole system. Um, <clears throat> with that, I'll show, give you a quick visual of what it's what it would look like all connected. And then everybody's on the same page. So you want to put your active wire <clears throat> going to the second button or the second prong and then your first prong underneath is always your ground and then you would daisy chain that to every other button so all your buttons should look like this and you can see right away just from a quick thing just not even the wires that I have just sitting on the desk but just coming off of it that can get pretty messy and pretty complicated pretty quick <coughs> um, all in all uh, if you do one at a time, so if you just do all your color coats, then you go afterwards and you do your uh, daisy chain of your of your ground, and then you do your uh, LED harness afterwards, you should be fine if you do it all in sequence. Um, that's where I say up front, it's nice to have a plan with your LED and put it in the right way, um, negative versus positive. Decide which side you're going to put it on. If you set it all up, it happens all the time, especially around here too, because we're doing it all the time. Um, sometimes you'll set up all your harnesses and stuff, and sometimes you'll either get the connection here backwards, or the bulb itself is backwards. If you turn everything on and the bulb doesn't work, it's not because it's not always because you have a burnt out bulb. You can just take it out, flip it over, and put it in, and it'll light up. You just put it in the wrong way. Um, it's a lot easier to do that sometimes than it is to actually change the wiring underneath. Because once this is all together, as long as you have enough slack and this is mounted to a cabinet, you just give it a little twist, it'll drop out. Then you can switch your LED and do that kind of thing. These LED, LEDs, sometimes they're kind of cheap, I guess. Uh, if you can get extras when you order stuff, I always get a couple extra <clears throat> with everything that I do. Because uh, you never know, you might get some defects and that kind of thing as well. Uh, we sell them separately as well if you want to grab a couple extra. And... I guess that's pretty much about it. If you have any questions on wiring any buttons, any harnesses, the way they're set up, uh, feel free to check out our website on videos and tutorials. Uh, we have a whole bunch of that stuff that's download downloadable. We have uh, PDFs and everything. Uh, we have more of this kind of content on our webpage as well, as well as our YouTube channel. So feel free to check us out. You can contact us directly by email or uh, you can just give us a call and uh, we're always here to answer the phone. So. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, hopefully that was helpful.